what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling, feeling good. good. Today guys, we're back to join some new video guys. Let's my video for guys. My name is Devan and welcome to the yes, first reaction. So guys, we're going to be reacting to why Islam is the truth. This is going to be our first time checking us out. I'm so check it out with you guys. So how do you? So close for you. Don't react more. Let's get into this video. يا نفس إن لم تغفري لا تنزعي Consider this beautiful painting of nature. If I told you that some ink randomly fell onto the paper and made it by chance, how crazy would you think I was? You would instantly deny this and tell me that a painter designed it. If something like a painting must have a designer, how about something far more complex like the universe? Just like the painter used different colours and techniques to draw the painting, the universe is also finely tuned to perfection by many fundamentals. If the painter made a small mistake, it would ruin the painting. Similarly, if the fine tuning of the universe were to change even by the smallest amount, it would no longer exist. Just like it is almost impossible to accidentally produce this painting, the odds are almost infinitely more impossible for the universe to accidentally come into existence. Allah challenges our intellect in a profound verse in the Quran. He says, Were they created by nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? Or were they the creators of the heavens and the earth? Rather, they are not certain. Firstly, Allah asks, were they created by nothing? If you think about it, you will quickly realize that this is impossible as you cannot create something from nothing. Now apply this logic to the universe as a whole. Then Allah asks, were they the creators of themselves? For you to create yourself, you have to already exist before you were born to create yourself, which is also impossible. Now apply this same logic to the universe. Since the universe has a beginning, it could not have created itself. Finally, Allah concludes by saying, or were they the creators of the heavens and the earth? Two points. Firstly, the universe existed billions of years before us, and to create something that existed before we were even born is impossible. Secondly, the universe is far, far greater than us. Look at the most impressive human inventions and you'll find that they're nothing compared to even a fly. Human creation is always prone to mistakes and needs teams of maintenance and support in case of breakages or errors. If something as trivial as software needs maintenance, who then is maintaining the universe? From this verse alone, Allah shows us that we could not have come from nothing, we could not have created ourselves, and we cannot create anything as incredible as the universe. So how then do we think we are intelligent enough to deny the existence of a creator? Okay, you might now be thinking, if God created the universe, who created God? Firstly, to say that God has a beginning or is created, by definition means this being can no longer be a God. But for argument's sake, let's say that the universe was created by something that is created. The next logical question is, what created that thing? And you can ask that question again and again, an infinite amount of times, and the only way to break this chain is to say that creation was created by an uncreated creator. 
Secondly, time is a property of the universe. Since the universe has a beginning, we use time to describe what happened from that point. Since Allah is the creator of the universe and time, it does not mean he is restricted by these laws. Hopefully, we should arrive at the rational conclusion that the universe is created and maintained by an uncreated creator. Generally, there's one person in charge. There's one captain of a ship and one king of a country. Imagine you're driving a car and both you and the person next to you have a steering wheel. Either you agree which way to turn, which shows you are both dependent on each other, or you try and turn left and the other tries turning right and one of you overpowers the other. Now apply this logic to God. If there was more than one God, then these gods cannot be all powerful for the same reasons and a god that is not all-powerful, by definition, cannot be a god. Just imagine if there were two kings running a country. There would be chaos, and amazingly, Allah directly addresses this in the Qur'an. He says, Had there been other gods besides Allah, they both would have been destroyed. In Islam, one of Allah's names is Al-Qahar, the one that overpowers. He doesn't answer to anything or anyone, and his will is imposing. The biggest proof that there is only one God is the fact that there is balance in the universe. The laws of physics are consistent, the sky is always blue, and gravity is always the same. At this point, you might believe in God, but have a problem following organized religion. I mean, why should you be restricted to a specific way of life, right? But if you really think about it, you already are living your life in a specific way according to the laws of your country. Imagine if your country had no law. Life would be terrifying and everyone would be so lost. This shows us that we need direction. Not only that, but every country has slightly different laws that are constantly changing over time which also shows us that we as humans cannot decide what is 100% right or wrong. So if we need direction, but cannot decide what is objectively right or wrong, we have a problem. Where do we get the right direction from? Imagine if I gave you a car and you'd never seen one before. Guessing what to put in the fuel tank and what buttons to press is not good enough but referring to the instruction manual provided by the manufacturer, we will know exactly how to drive the car. In the exact same way, if I want to know why am I here, where am I going, what is my purpose, I must refer to the revelation provided by the creator. How? The answer is the Qur'an. We've all heard about Moses splitting the sea and Jesus being born a miraculous birth, but these miracles are all limited to the time and place in which they happen. The Qur'an, on the other hand, is a special miracle that was given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and is not limited to time or place. It is a miracle that me and you can pick up, study and experience anywhere, anytime. You can never prove that the splitting of the sea actually took place, but the Qur'an can be proved to be from God. It is a book like no other book, a speech like no other speech, and this can be shown in so many ways. For example, Allah predicted its preservation from the beginning. More than 1,400 years have passed, and the Qur'an remains in its original language completely unchanged. Since Muslims claim the Qur'an is the direct word of God, any changes, even if it was a single letter, would instantly falsify this claim. Allah challenges the reader to look for contradictions if they think the Qur'an is man-made. What we find is that the message is 100% consistent with absolutely no contradictions. Allah also told us that he would make the Qur'an easy to learn. Today, millions of people around the world have the Qur'an stored in memory. 
Every single generation since the Qur'an was revealed has had memorizers, making it the only book in history to have passed down in both human memory and written form. If all books were to just disappear, the only one that would be back in a day is the Qur'an. Amazingly, Allah told us that when people listen to the Qur'an being recited, they are impacted and you see them start to cry. Thanks to YouTube, we can see this happening with our own eyes. You see people who aren't even Muslim and don't even understand the language breaking down into tears. Even those who recite occasionally cry. What other speech can do this? <laughs> Linguistically speaking, the Qur'an remains the best Arabic literature to date. Since Arabic is arguably the most eloquent language to ever exist, this makes the Qur'an the most eloquent speech in the most eloquent language in history. The language of the Qur'an alone is enough to prove that it could not have come from man. To add to this, the Qur'an is also jam-packed full of scientific and historical accuracies that were impossible to have been known 14 centuries ago. From the Big Bang, to the expansion of the universe, and to every living thing being made from water. From the two seas that meet but don't mix, to the accurate description of the human embryo. In fact, there are more than 1,000 scientific verses in the book, and not a single one of them can be disproved by established science. For those who are spiritual, it magnifies our spirituality. For those who are intellectual, it challenges our rationality. And the Qur'an, by far, is the most popular book in the world that is read billions of times every single day, week in, week out, all year round. For these reasons, Muslims can proudly claim that the Qur'an is self-evident to be entirely from God. If you are still sceptical, pick up a Qur'an and read it for yourself. Imagine an African child that lived 12 years in poverty and then died of starvation. Now compare this boy to a 70-year-old drug dealer that had all the money, all the cars and everything he wanted, and then he also died of old age. One lived a short, miserable and difficult life, and the other lived in luxury whilst causing harm to society. Now, they are simply a collection of bones six feet under the ground. If there was no life after death, how unfair and depressing would that be? The world is full of injustice, People get away with so much evil and innocents get blamed for things they didn't do. Simply just believing in the Day of Judgment is belief in ultimate justice and accountability. It breathes hope and optimism into every struggling heart. In Islam, the events of the afterlife are described in such graphic detail. No other religion describes it with such conviction and Allah calls the Day of Judgment in the Quran the ultimate reality. Muslims live to do good in preparation for death. Isn't this a powerful motivator? Throughout history, Allah has sent prophets like Abraham, Moses and Jesus to bring people back to the worship of one God. In Islam, the final prophet sent to humanity was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What's interesting is that the way Muslims have preserved his life is above and beyond any other type of preservation in history. You can't just make up stories about him. Narrations must be supported by the chain of narrators that goes all the way back to his time. The narration and narrators are then tested against strict criteria to verify that the narration can be trusted. Depending on the tests, the narration is then graded with a level of authenticity. 
anything you read about the Prophet must have a grade or else it is completely ignored. If the grade is substantially weak, Muslims instantly reject the narration. So to deny that he existed is like denying all history. Saying that, his life is so well documented because of the impact he had on his people. We know things like how he used to eat and even the position he used to sleep. It wouldn't be far from accurate to say that we know more about him than any other historical figure. All of this information literally invites us to study his life and make a rational decision to see if he was actually a prophet or not. There are three possibilities for this claim. Either he was lying, or he was mad, or he was telling the truth. Let's break this down. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received the first revelation from God at the age of 40. This means he lived a completely normal life for 40 years before becoming a prophet. In these 40 years, he built a reputation in his community and they literally nicknamed him the truthful and the trustworthy. He was known to have never told a single lie. Think about it, 40 years of sincerity and then to suddenly come up with a monumental lie like being a prophet doesn't make any logical sense. Later in his life, as people started joining Islam, the leaders were getting more frustrated. They offered him anything he wanted just so that he stopped preaching. If there was any time to show that he was lying, this was it. Remember, a liar always lies for a reason, but he rejected. Doesn't this show sincerity? The Prophet was also known to have so much wisdom and his character was impeccable. People used to race to serve him in any way they could. Muslims and non-Muslims turned to him for advice and he never said no to any request. These are not qualities of someone that is mad. Perhaps the biggest proof for me is that the Prophet could not read or write, had no educational background, yet was able to bring forth the Qur'an that remains the best literature the world has seen even after 1400 years. Logically, this is enough to verify his prophethood. The Qur'an has literally shaken the world. The Prophet also told many prophecies that made no sense at the time and have only recently materialized. Listen to this. He said that the poor Arabs of the deserts would compete in building tall buildings. He said that interest will spread such that no one can escape the dust of it. He said that power and authority will be given to the wrong people. He said that sexual promiscuity would become rampant and that parents would give birth to their masters. These are only just a few examples from a plethora of authentically graded prophecies. Amazingly, his greatness is globally recognized even by non-Muslims. For example, Michael Hart, who wrote the famous book of the top 100 most influential people in history, and he places the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as number one in his list. Other examples include Dr. Keith Moore, George Bernard Shaw, Gandhi, Thomas Carlyle, Lamartine, and the list goes on and on. Can't we logically and rationally say that he was telling the truth? See, the message of Islam is very simple. It is to direct all inward and outward acts of worship to Allah and Allah alone. Worship isn't just to pray. Worship is to obey and to love and to rely upon Allah more than anything or anyone else. It means to break free from society's expectations of you and to fully submit to the expectations of the Creator. In other words, you don't act a certain way or dress a certain way to please certain people. Everything you do is for the sake of Allah. This is true liberation if you ask me. There is no leap of faith in Islam. Allah has given us an intellect, countless signs and a lifetime to search for him. 
If after this video you now believe that there is only one God, and that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was his final prophet, you have found the truth, and I would like to personally invite you to Islam. This was good, and this is a way of preaching. It was kind of like spreading the words to um, it's Islam truth. Um, it was the Quran written well. The Quran is kind of similar to the Word of God Bible. So I'll say the word over there, some of the words that tally with um, the Bible itself, I truly accept as true because of how. I was being brought up and what I know about the scripture, the Bible itself. People are always saying um, the Bible is just basically a story of people' experiences on earth. Um, the Quran also relates with the Bible too, in some specific or in some in some certain ways. Him coming about um, Islam is true. I'm not disputing the fact that um, Islam is not true. Uh, what you guys are saying is not true. Truly accepted as a prophet was not mentioned. After Jesus, there was no prophet in the Bible. Hard to believe, but it's there's evidence based right here. It said he lived for 40 years until he became the prophet. So uh, my religion, I don't know why he was being taken out. Do I believe a man like Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, peace be unto him, exist? I believe. Was it the last prophet? Do I believe that? I'm still in doubt because my Bible itself, Jesus was the last prophet, but was Prophet Muhammad still the last prophet? I'm still in doubt. So it's a direction. According to him, so you man need direction. Whenever we need direction, we we'll go to the Creator. So the Quran itself is the is a path to follow. So as the Bible. So in Joshua 28, it says, "The book of the world shall not depart out from their mouths." Indeed, shall, that shall we meditate day and night. So you meditate on the scripture every day. It gives you the, a different feeling. That belief, that conviction you have, like you're doing the right thing. Um, that feeling that God is with you. So whenever you read the Bible constantly, it gives you that inner feeling. So I, I don't know if that's how you guys do read the Quran. If it's the same way. Well, you guys say you read your Quran every day, the most read book in the world, according to his explanation right here. That's how the Bible feels like to me. When you read the Bible, it's like an enlightener to me. And it gives me more knowledge. Like, it feels like the Bible, when you read it, you feel like, oh, you're finished reading it. Oh, that is. But when you read it again the second time, you see something new. The third time, you see something new. The fourth time, you see something new. It keeps on refreshing you. So it's not something that like, I'm um, done reading the Bible. You can never be done reading the Bible. That is just it. So him saying this Islam is a true religion. Okay. Sometimes in the sometimes in Quran I truly accept. Uh only because I've been saying this several times. In Quran I truly accept. Um I stick with my Christianity, I stick with Christianity because I believe in it. It's not because I was being brought up like that. So I'm still learning more about Islam. I'm still learning more about Quran. I'm still learning about Prophet Muhammad. That is just it for me. What do you think? Wow, this was very interesting, very educative, and I learned a lot from it. Mm. When it comes to Muslims, I have a lot of people that I know that Muslims are very nice and very good. Like the life goes along with their religion, goes along with their belief, goes yeah. along with what. Um, the Quran teaches them, and it's a very good way to live your life. Like you're doing according to what you have been taught. So I just feel it all comes down to belief, it all comes down to faith, it all comes down to the religion we are in and the religion we choose to believe. So my just you tell me what you just like this. It just relates to Christianity because there's some similarities there that I understand. So it's just like I'm just watching from here. I already know. So I just feel we should do good. When you're talking about the 70 years old man that uh, was a drug dealer and died, this was the 12 years old child that uh, stabbed and then he died. I feel judgment is needed 
if there's no judgment, there's no justice. How do you get justice when you don't judge? So those people that have committed um, sins, those people that have killed, those people that have stolen, people that have done different things, what happened to them? They just go like that. Don't they get judgment? Don't they get punishment for their sin? Don't they get hold accountable for the things they have done, the evil they have committed? So if people don't get judgment for what they have done, if people don't, uh, if people are not held responsible for things they have done, then what is the purpose? There should be judgment. There should be accountability for everything everyone has done, despite the fact that it's hard, despite the fact that we struggle every day to be good people, we struggle every day to um, refrain from temptations. We, we still have to work harder. We still have to hold on to the faith and believe that God is there and we have to treat everyone with care. We have to live our life in a righteous way. We have to be nice. We have to love. We have to give. We have to obey God's commandments. We have to serve Him and treat everyone well. So whatever you do on earth, you're going to be judged. Whatever, anyhow you live, the way you treat people, the way you act on earth, you're going to be judged. So do things the way that when judgment day comes, you be, I wish I didn't do like this. You go through with strong faith. But like I said, you said that um, Muslims will live every day in preparation for um, after life. After life, yeah. You do, you pray, you treat people nicely, you do everything in preparation for after life because earth is a test. I know that we all live here and see if it's our home, is our forever place, we're going to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a test. And Wherever you go after this depends on how you live here on earth. So we need to be cautious and we need to stress on about safe and stop being worldly because the end time is near. Yes, this was an amazing video. Comment down below what you think about this video. Subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. Share this with us. Me and us can go. You know how to see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales all.